Hello everyone, it is the Historical Gamer once again, and today we are returning to Crisis in the Kremlin, the remake of the 1991 game uh, which put you in charge of the Soviet Union during the later days of the Cold War. In our game, we have just gotten started. On our first video, we spent the majority of the time discussing the basic features of the game and uh, getting into it. Uh, we went through the history of uh, setting up our, uh, our country, we went through the history of choosing our path, uh, and we got some initial decisions. But in this video, we're actually going to jump in and we're going to go ahead and start playing the game. So it's um it's early in the game still it's still 1985 uh but we're just a few decisions into the game and this is taken from a live stream from just the other day so i'm just going to jump back in and the audio you're going to hear is from me playing in the moment uh during a live stream all right it appears that you have all voted for several relations and support the communist levels all right well that is what we will do comrades 1979, mass purges continue in Iran as an answer to growing opposition and guerrilla movement. 1984, all opposition groups were destroyed. Comrades, it is all your fault. We have failed. I blame you. Bring me one of your heads. Let's see how that affected global relations with Iran. Iran is non-aligned. Defense level 40, ruling party Islamists. It is all your fault, comrades. Don't try and make excuses. We could have turned Iran red. Although that would have turned Iraq blue, but eh. <laughs> better than blue. Not better than red, though. Alright, which one of you shall I kill in response to your uh, treasonous behavior that has cost us a valuable southern ally along the border with the Soviet Union? Remember, folks, we have Turkmenistan. This was a direct border. We could have dominated the Middle East from Iran. Ugh. Now we will have to invade them and deal them a crashing blow. Alright. I hope my uh, Russian accent isn't too annoying, because it's definitely shitty. Alright, now... So, another historical event, 1980, retirements in Poland. After Poland gained a massive debt and entered the economic crisis, government had to raise all prices, which led to protest. Leader of Poland retired, but the new one still can't deal with the situation. Well, we have the choice to use the army to control the protests, run the rebels over our tanks, and support the transfer of power to moderates. What shall we do now, comrades? Do you wish for us to sacrifice the future of the Soviet Union once again? I'm not going to listen to you this time. I'm going to use the tanks. We're going to run these protesters over. The rebels were eliminated. You horrified the entire West, those weaklings. Every time. As you can see here, the DEFCON level with the US actually just changed. As a result of that action, we are now at DEFCON 3. Uh, and it gives us 40 left over until the next DEFCON level. Relations with China, I think, started at 40. They're down to 35, but um, that's where we're at now. Profit's still at zero. Uh, actually, we got some money back, so that's nice. Um, <laughs> tanks is an economic stimulus package. That is some support I can get behind. Okay, so I think we are now in power. History is over, and uh, we are now in the process of ruling in our own right. So this is our first current day action. We are no longer looking back at the past, but we are now playing the current. And as you can see here, we came to power. Now we understand that there are only a few people with certain reformist views. We must change it. A crucial step is coming, comrades. You're a step. You can maintain a young and possibly progressive neo-communist party of the Soviet Union. You can secretly release, release Tarasov from a psychiatric hospital. You can also return Yokolov or Kozlopov. Uh, Yokolov opposed the invasion of Czechoslovakia and has close friendly ties with the British monarchy. Kozlopov contributed to the reinstatement of Molotov in party. He was condemned for Stalinism. He's also told about the possible future counter revolution in the party. You can continue the work of Andropov and form a special economic commission of Ablikin that will prepare the foundations for economic reforms. Okay. Um. I think we can let all the members join the party. 
and they'll become Trotskyites. Uh, we can return Yakolov, which will bring us more liberal policies. We can return Kozlopov, which will be more Stalinist. Uh, create a special commission of applicant, which will be reformist. Or give, we will go the old way with uh, the conservatives. I'm either going with Stalinism or conservatism. Um, that's kind of my initial thought. Um, Trotsky. Shoot both. <laughs> well, I don't have that option. Um, uh, no liberalism. Not for this comrade. Someone go get Sam and take him out back. Uh, no liberalism here. Um, <laughs> down with Trotsky, that traitor. We must make a valuable... Eh, we'll go with Stalinism. Kozlov, main editor of the communist magazine, was included in the new Politburo staff. Along with it, under his protection, Malakonov, Kregnovich, uh, were rehabilitated with giving their party cards back. He has already sent you a letter in which he suggests rehabil to, to rehabilitate the anti-party group as a thing to use Stalinism against growing reform in the party and to cancel envelopes for the party officials. Okay, um, that seems like that would be a bit rash, but we can see. Um, so we're now into current day, and if we go, whoops, if we go to our state economy, foreign trade, administrative, and subsidies, you can see here we're at uh, 153 in expenses. Our gold reserves are down 100 from where they were. I'm not quite sure how this works because according to this main screen, we have a profit of 16 million every turn. But if we go into the state uh, spending area, we've got a gold deficiency where our gold reserves continue to decline. So I'm not really sure how that works. Um, oil prices are $39. or at 99% extraction, so you can see the slide in oil production has already begun. Fortunately, I've seen this be higher, so our expenses in gold are a little bit less uh, than what they were before. Okay. Uh, if we go back into the party, we can see Grishin is an influential political figure with seven powers, so we need to keep our eyes on Grishin. Gromyko is uh, strong, but not a, a serious threat. Gorbachev, Shenevanaz, uh, Legovov, and Yeltsin are all weak. We can ignore them for the most part now. Um, you could pay off the loans with our gold, but it wouldn't really do us much good. It would only save us two gold per turn. There's no reason to send Gorby to the Gulag. Come on. All right, let's go to the science section first. So you can see here, we've already gone down the, I think we've already gone down the development. Um, oh no, we haven't developed either of these yet. Um, do we wanna go down the PC route or the introduction of information and computer centers? Hmm. Trying to see what we want to do uh, from a science perspective, because we have 494 science points that we can use that will influence us. Uh, we can also use it in space work, uh, some massive spacecraft building, uh, life support developing, or a moon space station. We don't have enough for that. Uh, we can also go down, well, we've already done new research institutes and unsuitable. I don't think we can go down this route. Um, e no, I can't click on that yet. So red in a circle means that it's it's been developed. Oops. Uh, so just going back to the Ministry of Science, a, a, a white circle with a red line around it means you already have it. Uh, whereas a white circle with no red line around it means you can research it, but you don't have it yet. Um, I suppose a personal computer would be pretty capitalistic, right? So I think what we do is we go with the mass introduction of information computer centers, so a more centralized approach. Um, but it doesn't let me select that either. Hmm. Not sure. That's weird. Can't do any of this. All right, well, I guess we can't do anything with that yet. Uh, we may actually have to go and select our uh, second face of the country. So we're still in the setup, actually. Comrade General Secretary, now when you have climbed to power, you need to appoint a uniform second person of the country. The Secretary on Ideology will be your de facto undersecretary and the man who will maintain your policy on ideological level. 
There are quite a few variants, and all of them can influence our country's life. So basically, we can go with our vice president. Uh, Kozlopov would be Stalinist, or Gromyko would be a conservative moderate. Um, we can't go with Tikhonov, uh, and there's no other alternatives, basically because of the policies we've chosen so far. Um, man, you guys love Stalinism. That's a little disconcerting. <laughs> all of you just want us to be the second Stalinist empire, I suppose. Romeko is dangerous. You're right, Sylvia. He does have seven power, so he could certainly usurp, usurp us. So we'll go with Kozlopov, because the Stalinists are a much smaller faction. Um... So, Kozlopov advanced the theory that the developed socialism has never been built in the USSR, and the country is only building the socialism, is Stalinist, and now is promoting the people loyal to the communist idea. So, if we go back, uh, where was that again? Uh, if we go to our council, you can see here, we now have 30% of the Soviet Politburo as Stalinists, 21% are conservatives, and 41% are moderates. The moderates probably don't like us very much. But between the, the conservatives and the Stalinists, if we can build a um, alliance between the two, uh, we will be very strong. In fact, I could I could always ban the Stalinists, and then I think they would be like 59%. Oh, shit. So apparently banning and unbanning leads them to become more popular. I'm guessing they don't like me now. I was thinking I could just toggle it and see what the impact would be. We could ban the moderates. But I don't know what impact that'll have on anything. <laughs> ah! Okay, so now all we have is the conservatives and the Stalinists. Basically out of accident on my part because I just banned the moderates. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, Alright. Well, I guess that means we've got a two-party conservative <laughs> party. Um, oh, we do have a save option. Good. I was just wondering if there's a save option in the game. Awesome. Okay, so the game is now saved. Um, <laughs> so we now have a strictly conservative uh, government. Our, our influence is a hundred. Oh, our loyalty, our generals love us. One hundred and one, KGB a little bit less. Um, political points sixty eight. So I'm still trying to figure out if I can. The hourglass, I believe, means you have to choose one or the other. I think. I'm not sure. All right, so bah. I'm not going to send the KGB to the gulags. The KGB are our friends. All right, so SDI is proclaimed the U.S. President Reagan long-term research and development program. In our military specialist opinion, more precise name of the program would be Strategic Initiative Defense i.e. defense supposing executing of independent aggressive actions up to attack. Development do not stop and the program is seriously financed. We can no longer sit idly. So the USA has begun its strategic defense initiative, Star Wars for short, which was a program designed to intercept Soviet ballistic missiles. We have a few options here. We can protest on a diplomatic level, which is obviously cheap. We can enlarge our nuclear program to basically say, yeah, you may have lasers, but you can't shoot down all our nukes. Uh, we can not respond to this provocation. We can announce a counter to the program or start research on our own SDI replica. So we can either enlarge our nuclear program or I think the only two options. Well, see, the diplomatic option is enticing, if only because it'll convince more countries to like us. Um... But you guys seem to want me to go with the build more nukes. Okay, let's build more nukes. You can't shoot them all. Soviet massive nuclear wave attacks. In response of the Americans project, our great leader said we weren't born yesterday and we will show the world that American SDI is nothing against an increasing of our nuclear potential. It was named like a new Soviet threat in the Western media. The nuclear potential was increased in a big size. It affected badly on our economies. Oh, uh, great. Uh, well, it hurt our economy. Gives us a negative 33 profit. So maybe we can go wrong with nukes? 
Um, you can see here we're now into May of 1985. So each time we click on this little briefing folder, we get a action. So the Supreme Soviet Party particularly one of its most prominent members, Comrade Liganovich, is offering us to launch an anti-alcohol campaign because lots of our citizens are addicted to alcohol. That hurts the national economy and negatively influences the medical situation in the country. What is our decision? Well, we can ban alcohol. Uh, we can launch an anti-alcohol advertising campaign or propaganda campaign, I assume. Increase the price of alcohol or refuse the offer. Increasing the price of alcohol is just going to get people who already drink pissed off at us. Launching an anti-alcohol campaign won't be effective. Enacting alcohol prohibition will lead to prohibition, which is a horrible idea. Fuck that. We're going to refuse the offer. Vodka is good. It is good for the soul. It is good for the heart. The only idea of price is that it will generate more revenue for the state, but the only people that will be hurt by increasing the price are the ordinary folks. We will hurt the very people that we claim to support. We will hurt the proletariat. We will only aid the bourgeoisie. In true communist fashion, we must refuse the offer. After Lingovich's idea was rejected, alcoholic products continued to give our government money. People started to drink alcohol more because the amount of it had increased. Doctors are sounding the alarm. Let's take a look. So, if we go to... Where's health? Medicine is pretty strong. Level of education is very strong. Um, no, nothing there. Medical availability is very strong. Citizen income is actually pretty good. Availability of education is great. Uh, essential commodities. All these things are pretty good in pretty good shape. I don't see anything that says anything about our health struggling. Yeah. I don't really see a problem. So I think we're good. All right, strange, but nothing happened today. Okay, so now you can see we're into June, I believe it is, of 1985. There's actually two turns per month. Um, mass, mass alcoholism seems to be good, right? All right, so I don't know what to do other than just keep progressing. Crisis of service sector. It's a catastrophe. All businesses are stopping their work, and other our others are failing apart. Our, wow, well, our others, not our. If we don't do anything, this part of the economy will be destroyed. Spend all research points to develop innovative methods. Send finances to the sector. Um, okay, so we can't set work limits. We can't improve the sphere at the expense of another. So we can basically choose to either finance, give them money, or research points. Let's do research points. So we just spent all of our science on, on helping create some innovative methods. I didn't intend to do that. <laughs> Oops. There are no tanks, Gadsby. I can't send tanks. You can't fix uh, consumer goods with tanks. Okay. Soviet budget is actually positive. Political power is relatively strong. We don't have enough to really build any agencies, I don't think. Um, yeah, we don't have enough there. So we don't have any money to build agencies. If we check the globe, we can see kind of these are the same situations. I think, I don't know if it makes sense to do anything diplomatically in Europe or anything like that. You can see here the Western countries are still strongly Soviet here. 99% uh, loyal, 74 and I guess, I don't know what 74 is. It says 99% loyalty in Poland. Um, but basically... Western European countries seem loyal to us. Yugoslavia is kind of its own thing. They're not in the Warsaw Pact. Uh, and Finland is a Western democracy, but is apparently under our own influence. Um, okay. I don't know why we'd be giving Finland military aid, but hey, we just increased their defense commitments. Um... Okay, so we can't invite them to the common turn yet. But we just strengthened Finland. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to give India weapons. So I'm going to increase India's strength. Um, combatant quality greater than 70. India's pro-Soviet. So apparently they're not strong enough pro-Soviet yet to invade Kashmir. Uh, we'll see. Um... 
send weapons. Okay, so we sent weapons to Afghanistan and they increased their control. We could try to pacify them and actually decrease control by trying to pacify Afghanistan. So this is this uh, unfortunate scenario with uh, Afghanistan, which will probably be ongoing forever. As you can see, we also spent some money doing all of that. The power of the army also likewise decreased. Uh, the U.S. level 32, so the DEFCON level decreased a bit. Uh, we can support leftist terrorism, um, but they're not in the majority yet, so we can't do that quite yet. But the Stalinists, if they do become in the majority, we can support leftist terrorism to the U.S. Um, we need less than 4,000 money, which we have. Greater than 100 science points, which we don't have. Um, is it NATO? Reformers are the majority? No, so we can't do any of that. All right. Not much diplomatic stuff I feel like doing, so we'll just kind of progress to the next turn. Although I suppose we could check uh, other communist countries here. Military aid to Iraq. Civil aid to Iraq. Syria military aid. Civil aid. Okay, so we're supporting Syria and Iraq. Um, I don't really want to care about Yemen. <laughs> um... The, the DPRK, unification, required no imperialism or non-interference policy. Japan was demilitarized. Resume the war. Uh, can we do that? No. Okay. Resume the war. <laughs> um, cruel exchange for investment. No. 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 Okay, so we really can't do a lot of diplomatic affairs yet. It doesn't let me resume it, guys. Sorry. All right. Let's go ahead and progress. Good shortage. Because of your unwise policies, a good shortage occurred, which led to the population unhappiness and fall of overall wealth. Soviet man mustn't worry about luxuries. Transfer economy resources to the production of goods. Spend money to import the goods. question is, what did we spend? Ooh, gold reserves are falling. Uh, so is oil production. Oil price is staying the same. Alright, overall we're fine. There are no tanks, Gatsby. I can't send tanks. Your private advisor has to deal with our competitors who try to prevent a rise to power and will try to further disrupt our action. Okay. Ah, yes, folks. Gramico is a threat, remember? He is a seven power. We can deal with Gromiko now if we would like. Yeah, yes. We could also deal with Gorbachev or Grishin. Grishin is likewise powerful, and Gorbachev is not powerful, but he's a reformer. I feel like we should deal with Gromiko, however. I will let you all vote on this, but Gromiko, remember, was a 7 out of 10 threat. So, we can send Gromiko to the, uh, to the uh, gulags, or... A you know, we can we can uh, tell him that his services are no longer required. Ah, uh, yes, comrades. You seem to have wisdom. You seem to be overwhelmingly saying destroy Gramico, and so we shall. Now... When we have become the most influential personnel of the USSR political arena, we can do whatever we want. Their comrades were crushed and removed from power. As our main opponent, we are preparing for his retirement. Oh, that seems very kind. Um, so if we go here, we go to the council. Still 43 to 57. Um, I'm trying to remember. <laughs> trying to remember where I go. Uh, to see. Oh. oh, here it is. All right. So as you can see here, Gramico, his power was reduced by two, but he's still a strong political figure. That's interesting. Grishin's power has risen. So has Gorbachev. The rest of these are, are somewhat ignorable. So now Grecian is the next uh, next threat. 
All right. Campaign against racism. An urgent message from our Minister of Foreign Affairs that the USA has put economic sanctions on South African Republic which still pursues a policy of racial segregation. Should we intervene in other countries' life? All the world is waiting for our government's reaction. Um... So we can intervene deeper, stay neutral, or join the sanctions. I say we join the sanctions. I mean, the Soviet Socialist Republic is not a racist nation. Uh, we believe in the equality of all human beings, and especially the downfall of the bourgeoisie, because they exploit uh, the disadvantaged. They exploit uh, the conflict between the races. If we are true Soviet socialists, we must support the sanctions. So we will. After we had joined the sanctions against South Africa, the apartheid regime started to fall. Then their new government declared political amnesty and held free elections. I don't really know what deeper means, so... I suppose we can take a look at the globe. I don't really know. South Africa appears to be um, a Western democracy. The Cult of Cybernetics The Cult of Cybernetics flourished in the 50s when young minds and scientists were dreaming of automized robotic cybernetic future which would be able to create true communism. However, then Skynet came. No, just kidding, comrades. However, the movement began to collapse after the attacks on Professor Kitov from Khrushchev and the party. Of course, the attack stopped when Brezhnev came to power, but other ideas bothered people and government wasn't encouraged to restore the movement. Only at the end, at the end of end, not and. <laughs> Good lord, end of the 70s, some steps toward automation began. But during Andropov's rule, the party was more concerned with Chinese economical experiments instead of it. However, Andropov passed away in the cult of space. Chi Guevara, and bam, don't concern masses anymore. Well, you're attracted by the automization. So maybe it is time to rebuild the forgotten but still a modern cult of cybernetics. Let's rebuild the cult of cybernetics. We must build a fully automated system that protects the values and the, uh, the, the future dream of the, of the revolution. Party remember Gushkov again. Information about his wills and dreams became known to the population. Cybernetic clubs began functioning again, and which allowed the cybernetic geniuses to appear. And Kitov even entered the Central Committee and became a congressman in the Supreme Council. Alright. So if we go... Where am I going here? If we go to the... Oh, we have 400 science points now. Can we do this? We, we can't do anything here. Why? Uh, 3,000 science points, 30 money without nuclear... Uh, let's see. We have money. We have 42 political power. No profits. We want to... Oh! Red means you haven't done it yet. I'm dumb. So I just did new research institutes without realizing what I was doing. Latest discoveries in genetics are new horizons for us. We need more scientific institutions in the sphere. Okay, so that actually helps agriculture. We could do selective breeding. That'll use up 300 points. We could go with precision weapons. Final technology researching. The Proton Collider. Um... Can't, I don't know why I can't go down this line. I really would like to do... Oh, I guess I don't have enough. All right, we're going to improve the CCC cameras because I want to make sure that we improve our internal control. Um, can't research anything else here. Precision weapons are only 30 science points. Our military tech is still usable, but war in Afghanistan showed that we need to improve it. We need to listen to military advice and upgrade our weapons. Precision weapons, equipment of our jets and helicopters, laser targeting missiles will improve our operations effectiveness. Yes. And so now we can't go down this massive assault theory, but we can go down the elite army theory. So this is probably more of a Western approach. Um, let's see here. 
Proton Collider. We'll go down that. And then we're going to go down with a modernization of carrier rockets. Our rockets are the best in the world, but perfection knows no limits. Empowering the engine lets them carry more warheads and fake targets, and the possibility of suborbital flight will be the problem for the imperialist missile defense. Um... So now at this point, we don't have enough science points to do anything except to develop one of the tier two science sciences. So we can either go with re-equip the KGB, uh, we can go with selective breeding, we can go with fifth generation weapons, uh, or modern carrier rockets. I think because we want to improve the economy, I'm going to go with selective breeding because that'll help the agricultural department, and that will actually help increase output and improve delicious food. So we'll go with that. There you go. Selective breeding. Ah, uh, the Soviet national anthem playing in the background. They actually have an English sung version of it as well in the game. Okay. Uh, Linisco's purge. Wide arguments take place around the genetics. Part of the state employees together with some of the scientists and priests oppose the genetics, seeing it as the pseudoscience which opposes both materialism and religious dogmas while also demanding the purge of the green genetic scientists. Begin new Leshenko's purge. Begin the purge against the demanders, or let it be? Let us begin the purge against the demanders. They know not what the future scientists will accomplish for this country. We will remove these bourgeoisies, these protesters with outdated methods. The Soviet party knows no bounds. The campaign against Nudlishinko's purge swiped across the country. Part of the scientists were purged. Some officials had to retire, and others admitted their mistakes and condemned the fight against the genetics. Damn straight they did. Got. All right. How dare they, indeed? Indubitably. All right, folks, and that's going to do it for this episode of Crisis in the Kremlin. Uh, this, again, as I said, is a remake of a 1991 game and puts you in control of the leader of Russia. The game is a lot of fun. Uh, this is the end of this stream, so we'll go ahead and end the video here. I'm enjoying the game a lot, but one of my big uh, issues with the game thus far is feedback. I don't think when you spend money on certain categories, uh, it really does a good job of telling you what's going well, what's not going well. You see certain feedback like your budget or your profits or you know the power of your army, but what you don't really see is, all right, I invested this here, I made this science budget increase. What is that doing for me? How is this making the game uh, function differently? And and that's actually the reason that this is going to be the last part of this stream anyway because in the next stream which I did the following day I basically got stuck in a fatal funnel because of the decisions I made in this game I have no idea what I did wrong all I know is that every single turn my budget kept decreasing 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 and eventually I went bankrupt and there was no seeming way even massive economic investments and stripping money out of the military nothing saved me from eventual doom so I'm sure if you figure out the right balance in this game, it can go really well and go really fun. Uh, but on the flip side, like the game should give you some feedback and some mechanisms to say, you're doing X, Y, and Z well, consider D. I mean, I know that the game tries to mimic real life where there's corruption and you don't always know if the numbers you're being given are reliable. But from a gameplay perspective, there needs to be something that the game communicates that's going well. Even if even if it's not 100% reliable, there should be something that says this is going somewhat well or not. And then that lets you make your decisions going forward. I don't see anything like that in this game. I've had a lot of fun with it so far, don't get me wrong. And it's only $5, but... I, I'm sensing, and again, I'm only three hours into the game, so I'm st still going to give it more time, but I'm sensing there may be some weaknesses in design that, that prevent it from reaching its full potential. But we'll see. I'll give it another look uh, a little bit later. Uh, I'll try and pay more attention, play a little bit slower, play off camera, you know, just trying to figure things out a bit more and see how it goes. But I hope you guys enjoyed these two videos. Uh, let me know your thoughts. Let me know if you want to see more or, you know, if you'd like to see something different. 
Uh, Afghanistan 11 comes out tomorrow, so I'll probably be playing that uh, tomorrow. And uh, I've still got to get back to my Ultimate General stuff. I've got to get back to some Scourge of War stuff. There's a lot of stuff on the docket. I've got to put some more of those Panzer Corps videos up and continue the stream there as well. So there's a lot going on on the channel. Uh, but I wanted to try something a little bit different the last two days. Look at a new game that came out. Look at a game that I played the original of quite a lot. Not when it originally came out, but played it quite a lot. So let me know your guys' thought, thoughts. And until next time, guys, thanks for watching. This is the Historical Gamer signing out.